This is Pioneer Agronomist Scott Everskirt, an early harvest agronomy report. Just as expected, as combines have torn into the fields in the last few weeks, we're seeing some highly variable yields. So if you think back to the weather and kind of recap what we had, a lot of too much water early, uh, a June that showed not enough water and turned hot. Then we got into July with rain with extremely hot nights. We got into August in Greenville with a lack of sunshine, and then we finished it off in late August, early September with a late infection of southern rust that basically took out any remaining green tissue. So all in all, with some of the yields we're seeing being highly variable and the weather pattern we saw this summer, um, it, it's obvious as to why we are seeing that variability. Probably the biggest thing going on right now is probably the ear rots and some of the damage we're seeing out of some of the corn. Principally, we're seeing three ear rots, uh, ear molds out in the fields. Diplodia being the biggest one, probably representing 80% of what we're seeing. <clears throat> a little bit of gibberella, it'll maybe about 10%, and then fusarium making up about another 5 to 10%. As you think about diplodia, that infection is going to happen when you have wet weather during early silking or the next two to three weeks after that. And if we think about the time period when a lot of this corn had silked, we definitely had turned on the water around the 4th of July, and this uh, this crop definitely went through a wet period then. And that kind of goes all the way up to grain fill. Now, obviously, any time we see corn on corn is definitely going to enhance the uh, ability to see more diplodia basically as it survives on unburied corn residue laying on the soil surface. The thing about diplodia is typically there is not a mycotoxin produced by that fungus. So compare that to something like aspergillus that produces aflatoxin, diplodia does not have any mycotoxins produced. There is some work out of Kentucky showing that possibly there is a strain of diplodia showing some mycotoxins, but as far as I know, no one's really testing for it, nor have they identified exactly where it's at. From a gibberella standpoint, again, this one overwinters in crop residue. That infection is going to happen uh, through the young silks, so just around pollination shortly thereafter. And again, wet weather during and after pollination is going to be the principal, uh, principal conditions for development for gibberella. And the last one, fusarium, is a little more, more dependent on something happening to that ear. So when you get an earworm in the end of it, you get a ear that grows out the end of the husk and you get some kernels exposed, typically you need some kind of injury. And once you get that injury, you'll see a lot of fusarium showing up on that maybe last one to two inches of the ear. And then what you see is the last kernels kind of die off or um, definitely see some damage in the, the tips. And then some of that basically then translates back into the, the grain tank. So if you are going into the grain bin, the biggest thing to do if you're going to store this stuff and you've, and you've got some significant uh, damage in this corn is get it dry. Get it down to about 12, 12 and a half percent moisture and you'll basically stop these things from spreading or the risk of them spreading in, in the grain bin. Also, as you think about storing it over winter this fall, as the weather continues to cool off at every chance you get, keep that grain cool. Get it cool, keep it cool, and use a lot of air in doing so. And that will definitely help in uh, keeping this, this grain in some sort of condition and not making it any worse as you think about hauling it out maybe next, uh, next spring or next summer. From a soybean standpoint, uh, early results look very promising. Uh, beans appear to be potted up very well. I know this week we will cut some of the mid threes. Maybe a few already been cut, but I expect with the sunny weather this week, by the end of the week there will be several, several beans coming out of the field. Um, have not heard many yields yet, just in some group twos, but again, everything looks pretty promising on the soybean front. With that said, a lot of beans turning. I've noticed even some mid-group fours starting to turn. It's always a rule of thumb that once that field turns yellow, you're about two weeks away from harvest. So as you drive around, you can definitely see a lot of yellowing in bean fields and realize that first week of October is going to be, a, uh, like always, a big week for soybean harvest. That's pretty well it for this week. We will catch uh, early wheat planting probably next week or the week after. And always, if you have any questions, please contact your local Pioneer rep. Thanks.